Okay guys, so uh, moving on to balancing your rotating assembly. Um, I will start with showing you just the basics of how to balance uh, pistons and pins and rods. Um, I'm going to do the pistons and pins first because I lost a piece to my uh, balancing rig here uh, for rods, so uh, I'm going to have to make a new one. Um, anyway, uh, so most four-cylinder engines are what's considered naturally balanced. Uh, some other motors are not naturally balanced, but um, that more refers to uh, the, the way the crank is designed and, uh, and how the firing order is and, and how cylinders interact with each other. Um, but basically, as far as pistons and rods go, you want everything to weigh the same. So uh, pistons and pins are really easy. Uh, you're basically just weighing them and uh, making them all match. So I've already balanced all this stuff previously when I first got it, uh, but uh, I'll show you how I did it and uh, basically it's pretty simple. So I have a kind of a cheap little uh, scale here. It's accurate to a tenth of a gram and it has a thousand gram, gram maximum weight, which is plenty to do most of your you know pistons and rod setups uh, with the exception of maybe some really heavy rods or cast iron pistons that you might see in like a diesel application or, or a really old V8 or something like that um, but in general a thousand grams is, is enough to do you know the majority of stuff uh, so pistons basically you want to go through and weigh each piston and repeatability is the name of the game. So make sure that you can put um, put each piston on your scale and repeat that the number that it gives you over and over and over. So if you have to draw like a circle on it or put some tape on it um, in order to get your uh, your position exactly the same so that your scale always reads the same, do that so that you can get rid of any inconsistencies. Um, and basically maintain repeatability in your measurements. Uh, so basically all you do is once you get your repeatability, go through and find your lightest piston. Your lightest piston is obviously the one that you're not going to have to touch because you can bring all the heavier ones down to match it. Uh, so in this one I can tell it's my lightest piston because I haven't done any deeper work on the skirt. Uh, so that was, that was my baseline. And that piston weighs 276 grams even. And if I look at some of these other ones, this one was obviously pretty heavy. If you can see there, you can see where all the, the shiny parts are. That's where I've taken material off of the skirt. Um, people choose to take material off in different places. Uh, some, some do it on the inside of the skirt, kind of in the inside of the wall there. Uh, I prefer to kind of use spots that I don't think are going to be a strength issue. And, uh, and when I do it, I, I take care to uh, like try to nicely radius things and stuff like that so that you're not creating any stress risers or anything like that where a crack can start propagating from. Um, so pretty general, uh, you know, stuff there. So um, you can see... I put nice radiuses, you know, just around the bottom edge of the skirt there. And that's how I took weight out of it. So that, that piston weighs 276.0 grams. And just go through and make them all match, basically, and just bring, bring them down to the lightest weight. 276.0 grams. 276.0 grams. So basically I brought them all down to within a tenth of a gram of each other. Uh, most people say that within a gram is fine and a lot of uh, like rod sets that you buy and even piston sets will come in um, you know around about a, a gram difference in weight but it's not that difficult to get it more accurate than that so why not? I mean um, you know whatever that weight difference is um, you know, it compounds exponentially with RPM. So whatever that weight difference is, is can create a, a harmonic, if you will, 
in or a balance different in the rotating assembly. Um, there's other things like like uh, friction and stuff that can also cause imbalances, but we're not worried about that one. We're actually balancing, uh, you know, parts of the engine. So uh, I did the same thing to the uh, wrist pins. I'll kind of try to show you an up close. So this was likely my lightest wrist pin. I can tell because on my heavier wrist pins, you can see where I, I used a chamfer bit, a carbide chamfer bit, to deburr the inside diameter. And that's how I was able to take weight out of the wrist pin to make it match the other ones. So all of these wrist pins weigh in at about 82 and a half grams, 82.4 grams. Uh, and uh, so yeah, just make everything, you know, weigh the same. Uh, I also went through and I, just to double check, I, I measured each pair of keepers, so your wrist pin keepers, the little snap rings that, that hold your wrist pin into the piston. I measured each pair to make sure that those weighed the same also. So pistons, wrist pins, and keepers as an assembly are all within a tenth of a gram total weight. So uh, I have already balanced these rods. So maybe I'll just show you basically the general, uh, you know, how do you, how do you go about balancing a rod? Um, let me, here, I'll kind of show you a, a close up of my, of my little rig here. So I built this years ago. Uh, basically it's a big solid chunk of steel, flat ground steel. Um, and then I drilled and counterbored a hole. So it's got a bolt in the bottom and this vertical shaft. It's got a clamp here that's adjustable for height, and then uh, every this this kind of dog bone arm um, is just got bearings everywhere. Uh, so I have two bearings in the top held together with a bolt, uh, two bearings in the bottom, and then a bearing uh, also for what you hang the the small end of the rod on. Um, so basically, it'll look something like this. I gotta swing it out and then you put the big end on the scale and this is uh, this is pretty difficult to get it to repeat so the part that I'm missing that I had made was uh, basically a little cup that would that would cup the, the the rod bolt right at the spot where it meets the the rod flange there um, and I would locate that on the scale so it never changed positions. And that way, every time I hung a rod, I could get repeatable results on that big end. Um, the problem is, is if you, if you swing this thing either direction, and this is obviously dramatized, but even a little bit will make that the big end of the rod uh, appear differently, appear to be a different weight on the scale. So, Basically what you do is once you can get that to repeat um, and there's some different ways of doing it. Some people hang the big end with a bearing um, on the scale so they make a little like a T fixture with, a, with something to hang the big end. Uh, but I found it uh, once, you, once you get a setup that can repeat uh, it's pretty easy to repeat the numbers. So um, basically you want to be able to put the rod on there multiple times and repeat the same number. Once you can do that, you know that you can put on different rods and, and are able to repeat the same number. So once you get that figured out, um, the, the goal basically is to make the big end of the rod weigh the same and the little end of the rod weigh the same. And the way you do that is you weigh the big end on a fixture like this. Um, and then, uh, once you get all the big ends to weigh the same on your fixture, then you can just weigh the entire rod and then take off weight from the little end um, and, until all the rods weigh the same. And what I like to do is I will do that uh, once, so I'll, I'll make all the big ends weigh the same, and then I'll go through and make the rod weigh the same with taking weight off the little end, and then I'll go through and repeat the process um, at least once, sometimes twice. Um, that way, if there is a difference between 
uh, the big end and little bit little end, the the more you bring that tolerance in, the closer the the weight will get. So uh, it's kind of difficult, like I said, to get that big end to repeat. Uh, but obviously, it's easy to stick a rod on the scale and make them all weigh the same. So if you look here, you can see where I took weight off the big end was just by basically amplifying the chamfer that was on the outside edge of the, the big end where the bolt goes through. Uh, it had a chamfer on there originally, and all I did was make it a little bigger. And I tried to make it even per side and everything um, in order to take that weight off the big end. And then when I went to weigh them, make them all weigh the same, I just went to the belt sander and just took weight off the small end. You can see where it goes from the shot peen finish to the shiny finish. Um, same with, with that. Um, so, you know, use what you have on hand, belt sander. Uh, I used a Dremel tool, I think, with a little carbide bit on the pistons. Um, and then I used a carbide chamfer bit on the, on the uh, wrist pins. So uh, it's pretty straightforward. Um, but repeatability, I can't stress that enough, repeatability is the hardest part. So if you can't get the thing to weigh the same every time you put it on there, change something. you got to change your setup. So um, if I find my other part, I'll do a quick little addition to one of these videos or something and, and, uh, and show you how I, how I set that up. Basically, it was just a little cup, a little flat cup that would cup that, that rod end bolt, and then it had like a teed surface. And I could set that teed surface on the scale so that it would always pick up right at the edge of that rod end bolt. And that's pretty far out on the on the you know the, the pendulum of the rod, so you get a pretty accurate weight over and over again. So um, there's probably different schools of thought on how to do that and how to make it repeat. Um, in my opinion, a lot of the kind of the standard rod balancing setups that they sell aren't really good enough, um, and they, they're really hard to make them repeat like that. Uh, but if you can make them repeat, you know, you can obviously make it weigh the same. So uh, that's basically it on rods and pistons. Um, you know, the, you want basically the whole assembly to, to, to weigh the same. So each set of, each rod and piston and, and uh, pin and keepers and all of that, you want it all the way the same. So that way when everything's reciprocating, um, there's not something that weighs more, adding, adding more or less uh, load to uh, you know, as the, as the piston changes direction and things like that. Um, so everything's kind of equalized. So that's about it um, for the uh, pistons and rods. The rotating assembly, uh, so like your crankshaft, your, your main pulley, um, your flywheel, your, your uh, clutch plate, um, that, all that stuff has got to be balanced dynamically. So um, I don't have the equipment for that. Uh, most engine machine shops have that kind of thing. Uh, so they actually spin the crankshaft and they'll balance that by taking weight out of the out of the counterweights and things. They'll usually drill holes. You'll see drilled holes in the counterweights. Uh, so they'll drill holes to take weight out of it and they'll keep spinning it. And the, the machine basically has um, strain gauges on it so it can sense vibration and at what point in the rotation that vibration is happening. So then they can rotate it and take weight out of that part. And, um, and then once they get the crank balanced, they'll add the flywheel, do the same thing, take weight out of the flywheel to make sure it's balanced with the crank. And then your, your uh, clutch cover, same thing. Um, but that's a specialty tool that I don't have. So that's kind of a big dollar thing. Um, so it's not really something you can do yourself unless you're willing to spend a lot of money. Um, so have it done. You know, but make sure that you tell whatever machine shop's doing it that you want it Nat's ass. And uh, you know, on naturally balanced engines, you don't need to put counterweights on it to to mimic the weight of the uh, the rod and piston combo. But on unnaturally balanced engines like your typical V8s and stuff, um, you actually want to be able to give them the weight of your piston and rod combination, and they they do what's called bob weighting. And they'll put a, a weight set up around the, the rod journal 
on each rod journal on the crank and then they'll spin that whole assembly and there's uh, some science that goes into it. So make sure you have a, you find a shop that's performance oriented. Um, most of the standard rebuild shops aren't going to get things as close as we want it in the performance world. Um, so just something to keep in mind. Make sure you're asking them, like, how many grams is it out? Uh, I got the crankshaft balance for this motor uh, by my trusted uh, engine machinist, and it's balanced within four-tenths of a gram, which is pretty, pretty close for a crank. Uh, so that's about it as far as balancing the rotating assembly. Um, next video I'll go into uh, measuring uh, bores and uh, uh, bearing bores and journals and things like that and how I like to do it. Um, so I'll see you then. Oh, uh, also if you're interested in following along, please subscribe. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.